Forklift safety is an increasing concern in today's workplace. As a result, OSHA has mandated new training requirements for anyone operating this type of equipment. This program helps employers comply with these new training regulations by showing workers how to maintain and use their forklifts safely. There are a number of other programs available in the Safety Meeting Kit Library on related aspects of workplace safety. These include Materials Handling Safety, Hand, Wrist, and Finger Safety, Back Safety, and Industrial Ergonomics. Welcome to our program. Today, we're going to talk about how to safely use a tool that has revolutionized the way we do our work. What would we do without the forklift? A marvelous invention. Think of how inefficient our work would be, doing all our lifting with ropes and pulleys. Forklifts save time and money, and definitely make things easier on our backs. Hi, I'm Jim Riley. When someone first takes a look at a forklift in action, they're immediately struck by the sheer power and force behind these hardworking machines. That's a healthy respect no one should ever lose, because the more respect we have for forklifts, the less chance we have of causing an accident with one. Thankfully, with a little effort, avoiding problems is easy. Before you can be certified to operate a forklift, OSHA requires that you receive in-depth training on safe working procedures. This includes instruction on how to operate the forklifts that you use and supervised driving practice in a safe area. OSHA also mandates that your ability to work safely with forklifts be evaluated at least once every three years. You may need to undergo some retraining if your evaluation shows that you are not operating the equipment properly. In addition, further training is required if you've been observed being unsafe, were involved in a near miss, or have had an accident. You will also be given additional training if you start to use new forklift equipment or if the conditions in your workplace have changed. Becoming familiar with your forklift's operator's manual is another essential ingredient for working safely. Study it. You want to be so comfortable with your forklift that it seems like an extension of your own body. Forklifts come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Most run on either an electric battery or liquid propane. Some are powered by gasoline or diesel fuel. You'll receive training on the specific types of forklifts in your facility. This includes learning how to perform daily vehicle inspections. Following a checklist will tell you whether your vehicle is safe to operate. If you spot a problem, keep others from using the forklift and inform your supervisor. There are a number of things your checklist should cover. Make sure the steering is not too loose or too tight. Take the tire pressure of pneumatic tires and make sure solid rubber tires are free of glass and other debris and that there are no chunks of rubber missing. Check all warning lights, backup alarms, and the horn. 
verify that hydraulic controls are up to spec and that all safety guards are in place. Look at the batteries. Make sure cable connections are secure. Test the specific gravity and electrolyte level regularly to make sure they are in good shape. If your truck is an IC forklift, one that runs on gasoline or propane, you'll need to keep tabs on a number of other things. Check the fuel level, oil, water, coolant, and transmission fluid. And don't forget to be on the lookout for leaky hoses. No matter which type of forklift you'll be using, at some point you'll need to refuel or recharge. Remember to refuel and recharge only in designated areas. And don't forget to shut off the engine and remove the key. With propane-powered trucks, fresh tanks should be aligned on the tank locating pin. This will put the fuel pickup tube inside the tank in the best position to withdraw the propane as the gas is used up. Once the tank is in place, fasten it to the truck and secure the fuel line by hand. You are now ready to operate the forklift. When charging electric forklifts, make sure that the charger is off before you plug in the battery. This will help you avoid the possibility of being shocked. Because some of the plugs look the same, charging electric forklifts can be tricky. To make sure that you are charging the battery, pick up and hold on to the battery plug, then connect it to the charger plug. This will prevent you from accidentally plugging the charger into the forklift. Double check your connections to make sure that you're actually charging the battery. Every time you climb into the driver's seat of a forklift, you should remember safe operating rules. To begin with, you need to enter the forklift properly. Using a three-point mount, keeping at least two hands and one foot, or two feet and one hand in contact with the forklift at all times, will reduce the chance of slipping or falling. Make a pact with yourself to buckle up and obey all traffic signs and signals. These warnings are meant to keep people from running into each other. Always drive with your forks low, four to six inches from the floor. Raising them higher could cause serious harm in an accident. While you're traveling, leave three truck lengths between you and other forklifts. And, just as you would in a car, drive to the right of oncoming traffic. Alert pedestrians and other drivers that you're in the area. Stop at corners and doorways and sound your horn. And take your time going around corners when you start up again. Remember, most forklifts have rear wheel steering, so they don't drive like cars. Both the forks and the rear of the vehicle swing in a wide arc when you turn. Never fool around on a forklift. These are powerful machines that can cause serious injuries. Don't pick up hitchhikers. There's no room for them. And never use the forks as an elevator unless you've attached a safety platform. Because of built-in counterweights for lifting, forklifts are back heavy. Be careful that you don't overturn when taking a corner. Keep in mind that most forklifts are supported only at three points, even ones with four wheels. The first point is at the center of the rear axle where the forklift is steered from. The second and third points are the front wheels. These three points form what is known as the stability triangle. When lifting and carrying an object on the forks, the center of gravity will shift towards the front of the forklift and the second and third points of support. Make sure to keep the forklift's center of gravity safely within the stability triangle to prevent tipping. Be smart when you leave your forklift. Lower your forks to the floor and set your brakes. If you are going more than 25 feet away, or if your forklift will be out of view, turn it off and take the key with you.
The person who trains you will encourage you to think through a job before you even turn the key. There can be a lot to think about. Examine the area where you are going to be working. Check the width of the aisles and the height of the ceiling for clearance. Make sure that you can safely raise the mast so that you don't hit overhead pipes or ductwork. Remember, not all forklifts are appropriate for every job. For instance, some forklifts produce sparks. This can make them dangerous in areas that contain combustible or explosive materials. To help you determine which forklifts are safe to use in various situations, OSHA has classified them into different categories based on their ability to operate in hazardous areas. Before working in these types of areas, make sure the forklift that you are using is approved for the hazards that you may encounter. Refer to the regulations and talk to your supervisor if you have any questions. If the space that you are working in is poorly ventilated, Forklifts with internal combustion engines may cause serious problems because of the exhaust fumes they produce. In these cases, you should use a battery-powered forklift if one is available. If not, make sure the forklift you select is approved for the area. One of the most important things to consider when operating a forklift is the amount of weight that you need to lift. Check your forklift's weight limits to see what it can safely handle. Remember, as the load's center of gravity extends further from the mast, the forklift's lifting capacity will be reduced. You may need a bigger vehicle with more weight in the back to correctly balance a load. After all, when you're picking up an object, the balance of a forklift works like a seesaw. If there's not enough weight in the back, the forklift will tip forward. Forklifts handle differently when they are carrying a load. This is because there is so much more weight up front, which affects the forklift's stability and center of gravity. The placement of the load on the forks, how high it's lifted, and whether or not the forklift is on an incline all affect stability. Since carrying a load can also affect your steering, it's important to test the waters before moving up to normal speeds. Remember to always start and stop gradually, otherwise the load could slide right off your forks. If your forward vision is blocked by a bulky load, drive in reverse. It's safer for pedestrians and other traffic. If you have to drive forward with a blocked vision, use a spotter to help you. You also need to take a close look at the surface you are driving on. Even simple things can spell disaster, like wet or icy spots which could cause you to skid out of control. Cross uneven surfaces such as railroad tracks and speed bumps slowly and on a diagonal. This will help the forklift maintain its balance and will reduce the risk of tipping it over. Keeping a forklift balanced on a ramp can be a real challenge. Be especially careful on slopes with more than a 10% incline. The rules for driving on ramps differ depending on whether or not there is a load on the forks. When you're carrying a load, always keep the forks and the load uphill. That means you must back down a slope. Otherwise, you could lose the load. If you're driving without a load, the reverse is true. Always keep the forks pointed downhill. This will keep the forklift balanced and help prevent it from tipping over. Whether you're carrying a load or not, you'll need to keep an eye on your speed as you go downhill. Don't accelerate. Maintain a steady speed so you don't lose control of the forklift. Angling across a slope is never a good idea. A forklift can tip over even on the slightest of grades. In the event that you do tip, don't jump or you'll get crushed by the forklift's protective cage. Instead, brace your feet against the floor of the forklift Pull your chest to the steering wheel and hold on. Whatever you do, 
Don't try to get away from the forklift until it has come to a complete stop. Working with trailers presents a special set of considerations. Before loading a trailer, look over the flooring. Make sure it can take the weight of the forklift and the load. Check to see that there are no holes and that you can't see through the floor anywhere. Even a small crack can be dangerous. The trailer brakes must be engaged. A truck restraint system should be used when available. Wheel blocks can also keep the trailer tight up against the dock. Extend metal bridge plates to provide safe access into the trailer. Finally, keep your forklift well away from the edge of the dock. There is a lot to consider when you operate a forklift and much to be aware of. Now, on to the main course, lifting. For a safe pickup, the forks should be centered and evenly spaced. This will distribute the weight of the load evenly with its center of gravity safely in between the forks. Stabilize off-center loads by feeling around for the center of gravity with the forks. When lifting an object resting on a pallet, you should space the forks out as widely as possible. Level out the forks a few inches off the floor, then slowly insert them. Once the load is against the mast, slowly raise the forks. When the pallet is about four inches off the floor, tilt the mast back at an angle so the load won't fall off during transport. Some loads, such as barrels, are easier to lift with a custom attachment. See your supervisor for more information. Following safe procedures is also important when dropping off a load. Let's take a look. Position the load a few inches in front of the drop-off point. Hold steady, then carefully tilt the mast fully upright so the forks are parallel to the floor. Lower the forks until the load is resting solidly and the forks are free. When you back away, do so slowly. Many materials are stored on pallet racks or stacked to save space. In these situations, remember to find out how high you can safely stack the cargo you're unloading. While stacking materials, you should drive forward until you are just short of the stack. Only then should you lift the forks. Raise them six inches to a foot above the stack. Move forward to line up the load a few inches in front of the stack. Then tilt the mast forward so that the forks are directly over the stack. Lower the object until it rests firmly on the stack and the forks move freely. Then back away slowly. Remember to always take your time, whether you are loading or unloading. Speaking of time, we've just about run out of hours. But before we go, let's review how to operate a forklift safely. Know your equipment and how it works. Use the right forklift for the job. Follow all safety procedures, including your daily equipment check. Drive carefully, follow safe driving rules, and obey all traffic signs. Plan your job out in advance so there are no surprises. Follow proper loading and unloading procedures. And finally, stay alert at all times and watch out for hazards. Remembering these simple rules will help make you the number one driver in your facility, the best and safest of them all.